Hey guys, my name is Jamie and I'm one of the co-founders here at Crimson Education. And today it's an honor for me to introduce Nikita to Ed Talks. Nikita is a rock star originally from Russia with strong skills in math and physics, who's now had an amazing time at MIT. Today we're gonna to be diving deep into what it's been like at MIT and beyond. Nikita, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you for having me. Pleasure to be here. So I guess first question, you know, we're both international students. What was the initial spark that inspired you to come from you know, really your hometown, high school, and make the journey to the States. Uh, what inspired you to go on this track? Where did that dream come from? I found my passion for physics quite late, again, sort of at the, at the beginning of the junior year. And my whole junior year of high school, I was focused on trying to achieve a good result, you know, on a national level. And I didn't sort of look past that point. And the first time that I actually, uh, you know, got inspired to sort of dream bigger and look at universities like MIT and Harvard was when I won the national, uh, s the national the final stage of the National Physics Olympiad and sort of secured my admission to, to Russian University and thought, well, what, what else is out there? And that's and that was the beginning. Incredible. Now, the admissions process to the States is quite different to going to Russian universities. What was the surprising part of the experience for you? Which parts came naturally as far as the journey to MIT? And what things are a bit, you know, left of center? I think one thing that, well, I guess the main thing that was surprising, and that's actually sort of where most of the Crimson contribution was was for me, it's like, you know, of course, grind and hard work is important. But, you know, in my mentality, originally, it was everything there is. And sort of with that thought, I thought, well, if I win an Olympiad, that's that's it. Right. That's sort of the, the the ticket. And then because of that, I sort of I was postponing it. And actually, I, right. I got in touch with Crimson sort of two months before the application deadline. And that's wh when it sort of hit me that, well, I actually need to know how to, you know, write, how to sell myself, how, you know, that universities are not just sort of, oh, you know, there's this is your test score. We're going to take you that they actually have cultures. And, you know, you, you sort of have to fit in that culture and find what, 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 the, what the right place is for you. So so this was the significant difference th that I noticed. Now, MIT is fascinating in that many of the Ivy League schools are aspiring for this well lopsided but kind of holistic applicant. But MIT has a huge focus on things like Olympiad medals, um, super strong STEM skills, etc. What are some differences you've noticed in terms of your, your classmates, the environment, the culture versus other colleges you maybe interacted with uh, in your journey in the state so far? Anything particularly distinctive about MIT that you'd call out? I think there are more people who who sort of picked this one thing and they re really went deep into like physics, chemistry, uh, etc. Um, so that's yeah, that's the sort of one distinction that you're you're very likely to meet a lot of technical people, which is quite different compared to like Harvard, where you know a lot of people are taking business, politics, economics. So and your conversations are going to be if you're on MIT campus about, you know, tech startups, some algorithms, you know, when we play board games, it's, you know, traveling salesman problem is what you have to draw or something, you know. So that's that's one thing. I think another important distinction is that MIT is, is sort of very sort of horizontal among students. I never felt like, you know, there was some group of students who would come, like, say, from rich families and, you know, sort of form a club or, you know, I... Like people usually don't don't care about you know what what your sort of family did. People are generally excited about what you're doing right now, and this is um, I, I think it's it's sort of great to to you know especially coming from uh, sort of low income that I never felt any sort of difference. Everybody just was you know an excited engineer or scientist, and that's I would say another difference. That that last part's actually really beautiful, I think, um, and. It's uh, it's a bit of a difference to some of the environments, which I do think have a bit of stratification based on even you know who's the who's American from certain prep schools or something you know global etc. Um, really really insightful point actually. Okay, and then as far as coursework rigor, you know you obviously came from an incredibly strong math physics STEM background. How hard has the coursework at MIT actually been for you, or has a lot of the challenge been in you know research outside of class pursuits? Um, how would you describe that challenge for you? Yeah, so so for me, the the classes, if you take the minimum requirements, if you take just sort of, you know, what the degree requires you to do, were relatively straightforward with my physics preparation. And, you know, you could just be taking three, sometimes maybe even two classes a semester and graduate on time. But I didn't do it. And honestly, everyone I know didn't do it. You know, a lot of people say MIT is hard. 
But I believe it's because that's, you know, what students choose it to be. Students, you know, choose to take seven classes instead of three, uh, startups on the side, doing research, two research projects at the same time. And this is what, uh, you know, makes MIT very difficult. But coursework wise, if, if you try to hit the minimum, then uh, with sort of uh, Olympiad background, it, it should be pretty, pretty straightforward. Okay, fantastic. Now, in terms of the aspirations of yourself and your peers at MIT, what kind of goals did you have as far as career pursuits, maybe in engineering or otherwise, um, as you went through college? And then what were some of the common ambitions of your classmates? Speaking from a Harvard perspective for a second, um, on the other side of Cambridge, a lot of my peers were focused on things like finance, consulting, technology, entrepreneurship. Um, I'm curious, other side of you know Cambridge, uh, tell me a bit about his aspirations. Well, and my experience was very skewed due to COVID. Uh, but sort of the first thing I noticed, you know, coming uh, on campus, literally first weeks, uh, you know, having chats in cafeteria, people are already like applying to hundreds of internships, talking about internships in, you know, software, firmware, hardware, you know, wherever, wherever they are. And, uh, you know, my vision was kind of, you have to learn a lot of first, you know, go through three years of school and only then you're, you can even apply. But there, everybody was applying to, to a lot of tech positions. Um, and I would say that there was some sort of kind of race the first two years. This was on everyone's mind. Everybody was talking about getting this internships, but then towards more like senior people started to, you know, after they've secured, you know, many people secured their positions or sort of found a safe path. They started thinking and reflecting more about, oh, what do, what do I actually enjoy? Somebody began in finance, but want to actually move to, to machine learning, for example. But at the same time, I started exploring more physics. And eventually, right now, I'm kind of getting to my next st stage in sort of career in life. Um, I'm starting in, at Harvard, uh, a PhD in uh, quantum science and engineering in a month. And, and sort of the picture of the progression of this thought is uh, roughly what I just outlined.